Hi there, and thanks for joining us for another episode of Conversations with Father Greg. In this episode, we have a homily for Sunday, December 12th, 2021, which is the third Sunday in the season of Advent. Let's begin with a reading from Luke's Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of Christ May I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, hi there. Let me begin by asking you a question. Do you have anyone in your family who seems to be a little bit larger than life? As we begin to gather for the holidays, many of us have legendary family stories that will bubble up to the surface. Grandma's Christmas Pudding a fishing trip with Uncle Tom, a memorable road trip from decades ago. These stories tend to take on a life of their own, especially when we gather for the holidays. When I was a boy, I never had the pleasure of knowing either of my grandfathers. They both died when I was a baby. But I've always felt like I knew them, just a little bit, through the stories that were passed down. Among many other things, both of my grandfathers were men of deep faith, but my maternal grandfather was very active in his church in a much more visible way. My father's side of the family have been Anglicans for many generations, while my mother's side were Baptists. Being a very handy person, my maternal grandfather spent hours at the church doing various repairs and odd jobs. When the congregation took on a building project, he was hip-deep in the work. As an outgoing, gregarious man, he would stand at the front entrance of the church, greeting people as they entered each Sunday morning. He manned his post, rain or shine, every Sunday morning. For many years after his death, I was regaled with many stories about the man at the door named Jim. It reminds me of an old saying that a person never really dies as long as their memory lives on. And inasmuch as that is true, these two men have continued to live on for a very long time. As you might expect, both men continued to have a lasting impact on their families even up to this day. The truth is that we all inherit a lot from our families. Some of it is good and wonderful, and, unfortunately, some of it is less so. 
We are each influenced by both the successes, but also the failures of those who have gone on before us. But despite all of this, we are challenged to find our own way forward in the world and to become our own people. I cannot live the life that my grandfather lived, nor can he live mine. We are each responsible for building on the legacy that we have received as best as we are able. Our Gospel reading for today shows John the Baptist picking up on this concept. Luke tells us that crowds of people had begun to seek John the Baptist out in search of the baptism that he was offering. Throughout Scripture, there is a history of God meeting people's needs in the desert. When the people of Israel fled Egyptian captivity, God used pillars of smoke and fire to lead them through the desert to freedom. As they journeyed toward freedom, God made water flow from rocks and fed them with manna that formed on the ground like dew. So, when we read about people flocking to John in the wilderness, there is the implication that they are searching to have some kind of need satisfied. Our text opens with John cautioning people not to rely on their ancestral connection to the patriarch Abraham, as though that gave them some kind of special standing. New Testament scholar Audrey West puts it this way, John cautions against abusing the privilege of a family tree that has a long prior relationship with God. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. If any think that ancestry, ethnicity, place of origin, language, or any other status marker or identity, including today, within the church or outside of it, allows them to lord it over others or lets them off the hook, John severs those notions at their root. John goes on to tell the crowd that a tree is known by the fruit that it bears. Put in our modern vernacular, deeds speak. There are many things that inform how we see the world and interact with it. Things like our family of origin, education, and cultural background. But ultimately, John's words challenge us to examine how we use our lives to make a difference in the world. Today, we hear John the Baptist inviting people to examine their relationship with God. John used abrupt language to get their attention and then challenge their sense of identity. According to Luke's description of the incident, John the Baptist actually gets pretty snippy with the crowd, calling them a brood of vipers. He goes on to tell them to bear fruit worthy of repentance and not to rely on having Abraham as their ancestor. What they do and how they live matter more than who they're related to. You see, many of John's listeners would have been raised with stories of Israel being God's chosen people. As such, they would have taken great comfort in being able to identify themselves as part of the nation of Israel. Describing themselves as children of Abraham was a clear reference to this concept of being chosen and set apart as God's people. At its core, John was asking them whether their sense of identity and self-worth was based on their genealogy, or was it based on putting their faith into action. Today, we are invited to examine the things in which we ground our own sense of identity. Are they centered on our job, our academic background, or, or maybe our family situation? What do these things say about the kind of person we are? What do they say about the kinds of things that we believe are important? And ultimately, how do they affect our daily behavior? And what does that behavior say about the things that we value in life? 2,000 years ago, John the Baptist challenged people to examine how they arrived at their own sense of identity. John challenged his audience to examine whether they based their sense of identity and self-worth on a birthright, being sons and daughters of Abraham, or on who they were as people. These were important questions for John to ask his audience, 
and there are equally important questions for us to answer today. I realize that these are some pretty direct questions, and I don't ask them lightly. But I also think that they are exactly the kind of thing that John the Baptist was trying to ask when he told people to live lives that bore fruit worthy of repentance. Let's face it, things like career or family add a great deal of value and fulfillment to our lives. But adding value to life is not the same thing as defining our lives. Careers can change. We can be laid off. We can choose to retire. And of course, the economy can be blown up by a pandemic. Then of course, there's the empty nest syndrome in which our children grow up and eventually move away from the home and begin their own lives as adults. And what of those who do not have children, or those who struggle to find fulfilling employment? Are they somehow less? Either way, we have to be careful about what we base our sense of identity on. Is our sense of identity based on something that is variable? Or is it based on something more permanent? Our Christian tradition encourages us to define our sense of identity not based on things that are changeable, but rather on things that are transcendent, things that defy change. These include the fact that God has made us in God's own image and loves us enough to seek out a relationship with us. Every time we see an image of the baby Christ in the manger, we are reminded that God seeks us out in person. During the season of Advent, we are encouraged to prepare and to celebrate the arrival of Jesus Christ. Part of those preparations means learning to hear the words of people like John the Baptist people who call us to examine how we engage with God and with other people. John doesn't simply call us to examine the world around us, but also how we understand our very selves and how we interact with that world. The sense of self-awareness that comes through understanding ourselves as people loved by God can be one of the greatest gifts that we receive this Christmas. Amen. Amen.